check out this innovative project named OpenUI, which allows you to simply describe the desired front end, and it automatically constructs it for you. It's entirely open source and truly remarkable. Create a sign-up form and watch as it dynamically builds right before your eyes. There it goes name, email, password, sign up, all set up in under eight seconds, which is quite impressive. But that's not all. Suppose we need something different. I'll click this button, hover over here, and request to divide this into separate first name and last name fields. Just like that, we now have fields for first name, last name, email, and password. It's that straightforward. I'll demonstrate how to use this because it's packed with numerous incredible features, so let's dive in. All right, here is the project OpenUI, and I'll include a link to the repository in the description below. It boasts 70,000 stars on GitHub, and there are several impressive aspects to highlight. First, it's incredibly easy to install. I encountered no issues at all during the installation process. Secondly, it's completely open source. Moreover, it can be powered by local open source models with a llama, making it very user-friendly and free if you use a llama. It also offers a Docker image, which simplifies things further. Although, to be honest, I didn't even need it. Okay, you don't need to install this locally. You can use it without installing anything on your device. Simply scroll down this page and you'll find a link in the live demo section. Click on this link and it will take you to the OpenUI homepage. However, you must log in using your GitHub ID. Just by doing this, you can access it without any local or device installation. So first, let me just set up a very simple front-end application. Note, this only covers the front-end, it doesn't build the back-end. But there are numerous projects that can handle that. I'll instruct it to build me a login form and hit enter. It then starts to generate the code, which you can see right there. You can actually watch the front-end being constructed in real time. So there it is, simple, but that's all we need. We have fields for username, password, and a sign-in button. Now, if you click this small button right here, you can select any element on the page and specifically request changes. For instance, I'll select this area and instruct it to change username to email after hitting enter. It will rebuild with that modification. All right, and there it goes. Now, I've realized we're missing something crucial if someone needs to sign up and they don't already have an account. So let's add a sign up button for new users. Okay, it's rebuilding. There's the sign in, forgot password, and now the sign up button. How simple is this? It's really cool, right? So we also have the capability to switch between different views. There's the desktop view, the iPad view, and the mobile view. Now this isn't inherently responsive and I haven't tested it. So let's see how it performs. I'll just say, make this responsive. Okay, it looks noticeably different now, perhaps adjusting to the window size. It's a beautiful form. Then, when I switch to the tablet view, it seems to adjust in size, and the same goes for the mobile view. All I did was request it to be responsive, and it adapted perfectly. Now, it does feature a toggle for light mode and dark mode, allowing you to choose between working in light mode or dark mode according to your preference. I prefer light mode over dark mode. However, the choice is yours. You can easily switch modes from here as you wish. Now, you can also view the chat history in each modification step by step, which is really impressive. Additionally, there are several options available. HTML and JSX are standard, but you can convert your project to anything else like React. Let's convert it to React, there it is. Now the code is in React. This allows you to transform your project into various front-end frameworks, and I expect they'll add more soon. There's also a share button, a download button, so you can download the file, and an option to copy it right from there. Now, if we delve into the settings right here, you'll notice a few options. By the way, all the operations I've demonstrated are using GPT-3.5 Turbo, not even GPT-4. 
yet it's still highly efficient and of excellent quality even without the latest model. Inside the settings, you'll find two choices, GPT-3.5 and GPT-4. All I did was switch to GPT-4 and upon running, it detects the available models. Then you simply select it and that's it. Now it's operating completely locally. What's really fascinating is that you can simply drag a screenshot of a UI for it to replicate. For instance, I took a picture of the Google homepage and dragged it onto the platform. While it allows me to describe the screenshot upon uploading, that step isn't necessary, so I'll just press enter and hope it recreates the page just like that. This process is a bit slower since it needs to analyze the image. Okay, there's the Google logo. One important point to remember while this loads is that the only open source model it currently supports with image recognition capabilities is Lava. So if you want to perform an operation like this, you'll need to use Lava. All right, there we go, almost got it. Now, let's make some adjustments. I'm going to click this small button right here, click over there, and change this to a microphone icon and a camera icon. It didn't get that part right, but that's okay. Let's see. Interestingly enough, it didn't make the change this time. So I'm going to try something different. I'll switch it to the GPT 3.5 update and give it another go. I'll select this area again and instruct it to change these buttons to a microphone icon and a camera icon. Let's see if GPT 3.5 handles it better. All right, it still didn't work. It seems the image recognition might be functioning, but it's not as effective as just using the text generation feature. Let me demonstrate some other features I've created. Here we have a to-do list and a user profile card where you can see options like a profile photo and a view profile button. Additionally, I've included a date picker and a calculator among other tools. It functions incredibly well, surprisingly so. You can select any element from a website or even the entire website itself. Now let's try one more thing. So I'll just request a SaaS pricing page and see how it handles that. The great part is watching it build in real time. And there it goes. This is the basic plan. Let's see if it adds other plans. If not, I can prompt it. But it looks like it's already doing it on its own. I didn't even need to ask. For non-developers wanting to build code, it's now incredibly easy. As I'm demonstrating, you can effortlessly create the front end. For the back end, you can use projects like Devon, Pythagora, and various others. Truly, there's no excuse not to build something if you want to. It's become so simple. Now, I see that the basic pro and enterprise plans are all different sizes. I will instruct it to ensure the three plans are of equal size. So I'll say, make the width of each plan equal. I'm aiming to get all three plans to have equal widths. Let's see if this works. There we go. Now they are all the same size. However, there's still a slight issue. The get started buttons aren't aligned equally across all three. So I'll instruct it to ensure the choose plan buttons in each plan are aligned vertically. All right, and it worked. How incredible is this? I am truly excited about this project. I'll include all the relevant links in the description below. Hopefully you'll explore and enjoy using it and find it valuable. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.